Avenged Sevenfold's Life is But a Dream is an acid trip of an album. Introduction So, this was certainly an album. And that's probably the only thing I could say about it that literally everybody who listened to it can agree on specifically. But saying that, I would like to clarify that I don't actually dislike the album. The statement above isn't bait, nor is it a cop-out to avoid saying a committed opinion on the album. It is simply a fact, and one that most people likely agree with to some degree. Life is but a dream at its core is exploratory. It is unique, and it's never defined by doing anything specific. Many of the band's past albums have had some form of uniformity in stylistic decisions or sound, even when tracks were very different from one another. Prior to Life is But a Dream, the album that comes to mind when Weird and Avenged Sevenfold are brought up together would definitely be the White Album, their self-titled. Tracks like Gunslinger, Unbound, and Lost are all quite strange, but never go so far out that they feel inherently out of place on their respective record, regardless of the quality of any of those songs. Comparatively, Life is But a Dream has pretty much no consistency. Dang near every track could have been on a different record, and even the trilogy of G, Ordinary, Death, which I will refer to as the God Trilogy in the rest of the review, has a sort of conceptual theme running through it, but sound nothing alike. And holy heck man, they are weird. The point that I'm trying to make is that this new record isn't just different. It's not even trying to be the same as anything the band has done, even if some of its strongest moments and tracks are the ones that are the most similar to things they've done before, albeit combining and blending those earlier creative decisions and pushing the boundaries of them. But it's only about half the album that does that, maybe even less. The other half, to me, the weaker half, is where the band goes out of the box, but they go so far out that you can't even tell where the box went. Given such an experience, I'm glad that I managed to go in with a very muted set of expectations, namely that I wasn't expecting it to be so bad as unexpected. Thankfully, this led me to be less disappointed than I maybe otherwise would have ended up being. But was the album worth the wait? Well, let's talk about it a bit more and find out. Part 1. The First Single I remember when nobody released earlier this year, as I had been expecting a new album from these guys for years already by then. But then again, I remember when 2021 was a projected release year for new material, so... Either way, bold move for a first single. The riff, if you can call it that, actually gave away early the fact that Sin Gates would do a lot of exploring with synths on this record. For the most part, I'd say it's successful, but it was also very unexpected here. To be fair, the riff does everything it's supposed to. If I ever think about the song, it never leaves my head for an aggravatingly long time. The rest of the track is simultaneously expected and not. The music video for Nobody gave similar vibes as the stage's album cover does, which was rather exciting, but sonically it's really nothing the same. I think that kind of immediately had me feeling a little mixed, as I loved the stage, but I think my major issues with the song come down to some of the production and post-production decisions. First of all, the drums sounded really weird and low in the mix when I first heard the song. Turns out that that's kind of a trend for the whole album, which is kind of unfortunate after the stage sounded so good. Secondly, Matt's vocals on Nobody are just... not great. I went into the album as a whole expecting for Matt to bring down the whole record, but for some reason it's only this one song that he just sounds like he is struggling. And to be clear, my mixed feelings on some of these aspects of the song have stayed true, even through a few listens of the whole record. Definitely not the strongest showing for the band, and had me worried enough about the album that I didn't care to listen to another single after this. Part 2. What in the... We Love You came out relatively shortly afterwards, if I remember correctly. I didn't listen to it but I did hear the general reception to it was confused, unsure, seemed like the consistent sentiment was that the song was really weird. Side note, having listened to it after the fact, it absolutely is weird. Really weird, but also good, I think, maybe? I'll admit I wasn't particularly excited for Life is But a Dream, after I was let down by nobody. It was such that I didn't actually listen to the album for the first time until over a week after it released. 
What surprised me the most, however, was that the reception to the album wasn't horribly negative. I even read a couple reviews that specifically stated as much, that the reviewers expected they would dislike or hate the record, but for one reason or another, didn't. Of course, there are plenty who think the thing's trash, and there are others who adore it, but I feel like general sentiment is somewhere around the area of how I feel. It's not bad, but it's not amazing. It grows on you over time as you slowly grow accustomed to the weird and appreciate the decisions the band is making in spite of how odd it feels. For the most part, that middle area is where my opinion falls. I almost feel non-committal about saying a rating for the record, but I guess I might as well do a track by track and discover some form of rating along the way. Part 3. The Track by Track Game Over Quite the unexpected start. Sounded as if it was starting in a similar vein as the stage did, until the song takes a wide left turn and does something totally different, much of it at least somewhat reminiscent of the band's material from close to two decades ago. What's incredible about it as well is that this track, and a couple others, feature some screams from Matt. The first in forever, basically since the Waking the Fallen and previous era of the band, of course discounting the random line from a track like God Hates Us in between. Game Over travels through various different spheres of the band's past catalog and goes back and forth between them in ways that they haven't done before. Solid opener, and one of the stronger tracks of the album. Mattel. This might be my favorite song on the record, not 100% sure of that, but it is without a doubt the strongest song, and potentially the most classic track on the record, though not necessarily that it feels like old A7X, just that it actually sounds like A7X, something that many other songs here don't do. It sounds like it's an evolution of what the band was doing on the stage, taking that sort of writing philosophy and taking it one step further, particularly with all the synths and other similar fun stuff that Sin does here. Nobody. I think I've already talked enough about this track. Don't love it, and sounds out of place simply because of the production and post-production. We love you. This was the first instance of what in the actual hell. This song is so weird. It's really unique, and I think I love it because of that, but I also cannot abide some of the decisions that goes on here. It's just so weird, man. I cannot emphasize that enough. One of the tracks that definitely takes a few listens to get used to. Cosmic. If Mattel isn't my favorite song on Life is But a Dream, then Cosmic definitely is. It sounds like a B-side from the stage, at least for the first half of the song. Definitely could have been on that record until halfway through when it becomes a sort of unexpected ballad, more akin to the ballads of previous records. It's generally got the most balance and soul in it that connects with me the most, especially as such a personal proponent of the stage. The main thing I will say that is strange about Cosmic, however, is the fact that this song doesn't just feel like a B-side to the stage, it actually sounds like it was the alternate ending to that record, that if Exist wasn't the closer to that album, this track could have been the closer to it instead, and it would have fit really well, and I think it would have been amazing. Similarly, it could have made a great closer for this album if the God Trilogy left any room for a track that wasn't the title track to close the album out. More on that shortly. Beautiful Morning. If I remember correctly, this was one of the tracks that for a good while was advertised as being one of the better songs on the album. And I genuinely don't understand it. I don't think the song is bad, so much as I just don't understand the relative hype. Through several listens, the song just feels disjointed and inconsistent to me, and doesn't have any of that A7X magic that even makes me want to return to it. That's definitely an unpopular opinion, but so be it. Easier. This is potentially the best balance the band pulls between the weird without going overboard in some category, even if several portions of the track, the chorus especially, I think, sound like they came from the Astros Playroom soundtrack. Not a standout song, but definitely a good one. But speaking of weird, G. What? Part 2, Electric Boogaloo. There's not really anything I can say about the song other than that it is so weird. If you haven't listened to it, trust me, you have no idea. And if you have listened to it, you know exactly what I mean. 
The only good commentary I feel like I can add is that while the other weird tracks up to this point have been mostly successful, this one is not. I don't like the song. It's too out there for me. Ordinary. This second track of the God Trilogy, so to speak, is a bit more successful. I wasn't expecting a weird beach vacation-esque guitar part, but the vocals on the song are also fitting. I'm generally not a fan of the lyrical themes of the trilogy here, as I feel they're relatively generic and phoned in considering the subject matter, but I do appreciate the band trying something different here. Death. This song is also, yet again, quite different. I think this is kind of like the middleman of this trilogy for me, as it is mostly successful, but I also don't love it. Definitely don't dislike it the way I dislike G though, so at least that's something. Life is but a dream. Very unexpected closer. Being solely an instrumental track, though I guess it's actually similar to the stage that way, although at least Exist has a speaking part to it. But not just an instrumental, it's just a piano track. Life is but a dream, the song, makes me think of the things that I enjoy about classical music, and I was happy to share the track with pianist friends as well, as it's enjoyable for what it is. To be honest, this song is the only way the album could have gone out after whatever the hell the last few songs were. It's not, like, fantastic or anything, but it's a decent wrap-up for what the band was doing with this album. Part 4. Where This Fits in the Catalog as I've done my best discussing Life is But a Dream, I've kind of mentioned periodically and skirted around my opinion that when the album is using or evolving material from the band's past catalog, it is at its best. I've also mentioned how the album, getting exceptionally weird, is when it is weakest. With that being said, where does this album fall in with the band's past material as a result? Avenged Sevenfold has always been a band defined by their evolution. But in the past, that evolution has been mostly rooted in what came before. In my opinion, Life is But a Dream goes a bit too far off the rails compared to the stage, which I believe was brilliant even in spite of its slightly weaker back half. I think Life is But a Dream falls on the lower end of the spectrum for the band's material. That sounds like a bad thing, and maybe to some of you it is, but the truth is that I'm just glad I didn't hate the album. I went in thinking that I would hate it, or at least dislike it. As is, I think it's just fine. I'm not notably disappointed based on my expectations, but also far from impressed, and I think that's at least some form of accomplishment for the band's 8th record, not counting an EP and a B-side record and whatever other stuff I'm forgetting. Conclusion Life is but a dream is weird, all things considered. That is the only single word summary of this experience. It is eclectic, crazy, and nothing like I think anybody expected, especially after the stage back in 2016, even if the stage is the album it has the most direct DNA from. And speaking of, after everything we've just gone over, I think I can finally say whether I think this album was worth a 7 year wait. For me, I don't think so. If the album came out, say, in 2020 or 2021, after only four or five years, I'd be happy enough with it, but after seven years, I admit I expected a bit more, wanted a bit more, even. I fell in love with this band back in freshman year of high school in 2016, shortly after the stage released, and I, at the time, loved everything they released except for the first two albums, as I couldn't stand unclean vocals at the time. Over the years, my tastes of the band have evolved as clearly the band's writing tendencies and philosophies have as well. I actually have a discography ranking for the band that I made notes for and might have even recorded back for the main channel back in 2020 when I was briefly doing music stuff, and I might very well whip that out again for a new video here, but that's neither here nor there. If it sounds like I'm still being non-committal, it's because this time I actually am. I don't love this album. It's definitely lower in the rankings for the band as a whole, but I can absolutely see where the people who love this thing are coming from. 3 out of 5 for me. Good. Listenable, but one I do not see myself ever returning to, even in my occasional A7X moods.